What is filler? While mostly used as a term to describe anime more than entertainment here in the West, for those of us that are well versed in the anime community, you are very familiar with this game. And while there could be many reasons as to how, and more importantly, why filler is used, and because I'm dedicated to the craft and integrity of this channel, pretty much making me a hero, I got my nose in the dirt and eyes on the screen, thoroughly developing my own personal research, as well as tallying up the opinions from the committee, we have compiled a foolproof and, some could say honestly, the most important list since the Bill of Rights of why, when, and how filler is most used. Stay with me and see if you can spot the similarities. 1. The anime has caught up with the manga and the studios are now forced to create episodes without the source material of said manga in order for the anime to retake the manga. 2. Used for character development and growth of characters that are not the focus of the main storyline and are now given the opportunity to become developed characters. 3. World Building basically giving the audience a deeper dive into the mythos and history of said universe, therefore making the world that you're watching become more complex, engaging, and immersive. And last but not least, four. Probably the simplest and most infuriating reason of them all. The studio, or manga, simply has no plan. I'm sure you've already started to notice some of the similarities here, and while in moderation or under normal circumstances, all of those aforementioned uses of the term filler could and can be incredible for the show and anime as a whole upon completion. But unfortunately, for the most part, those storylines just simply don't compare when you jump back into the main characters of the original narrative. And I feel as if that's where we're at with Marvel at this current moment. I've had this feeling for quite a while now, and at this point, I'm pretty confident in standing on business, even in the face of the public opinion's worst nightmare hindsight, but I can't help but think to myself that we, right now, are truly witnessing Marvel's filler arc. But why and how did we get here? Don't worry, I have reasons. Post the Infinity Saga, man, if only Thanos knew what the MCU was going to turn into, he would have snapped the whole planet. Marvel as a whole, and it's something that I believe the majority of fans, either the toxic ones and even the Marvel stands, have come to realize that Marvel has just been underwhelming. It was already starting to become a trope and a meme throughout the Marvel community, casual or otherwise, that the phases of one through three movies were pretty formulaic. But when the formula's working, you know the saying, you don't fix what's not broken. And for the most part, the machine that was the Infinity Saga ran like butter for the better part of a decade. But this, the Multiverse Saga, well, hmm, how do I actually put this? This saga pretty much feels like eating forgettable applesauce that you eat without tasting anything. Nothing memorable whatsoever. No epic or heroic character moments for characters that will be remembered not only by the fans, but the characters in-universe for future phases. No memorable moments that involve already established characters that push their character forward into better development, no memorable new characters introduced that the audiences can attach to. It's honestly generous to say that the majority of people even know who half of these new characters are. Characters with no skill, charisma, or charm to even hold a candle, or better yet, even be allowed in the same room as our old Cap and Iron Man. It's all just been kind of there on your screen. And when it's not, well, so are the memories, feelings, engagements of whatever you just watched. It's pretty pathetic, really, and the MCU didn't used to be this way. So why is it this way? <sighs> so with the conclusion of the Infinity Saga and either the deaths and or sidelining of major players, the direction of the MCU was pretty inevitable when it came to the introduction of new characters. Out with the old and in with the new is what they say, right? Fine. But in the case of the Infinity Saga, there was groundwork laid down for a smooth and seamless transition, including epic payoffs for our original characters and a dramatic and satisfying conclusion to a 22-movie saga. Absolute brilliance. Everything was just going according to plan, but ironically for Marvel, 
I believe that's where our main problem lies with the entire multiverse saga feeling as if it's not important, not immersive, and much like filler. Characters are the foundation of storytelling, and I believe these two phases are where the character writing has been hit the hardest, and with much more MCU products flooding our big and small screens compared to what we're used to, it all starts to pretty much introduce you into a jumbled mess of new characters with no time to really reflect and develop with the audience, therefore making it impossible or just creating a harder road for those characters to stand out as their own individualized characters we the audience can either relate to, support, or cheer for. And when it comes to Marvel specifically either introducing new characters through the multiverse saga or the writing of older characters carrying on from the yesteryears, it's pretty obvious that there are two defying and core writing strategies used for the majority of characters. One, the bait and switch, or two, the copycat. While I'm not going to get into the details of what those writing tactics are usually for because it's pretty self-explanatory and relatively lazy in my opinion, with the evidence provided to all of us, there's no denying that the floodgates have been lifted for a long time when it has come to these two strategies. But just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, let's just take a trip to the evidence room. In the multiverse saga alone, characters such as Yelena, the Red Guardian, the Task Mistress, the entirety of the Eternals, Monica Marvel, Agatha, US Agent, Sylvie, Ant Daughter, America Chavez, Kate Bishop, She Hulk, Echo, Amit, that's Ethan Hawke's character, just in case you forgot about him, the Black Knight, that's Jon Snow's character, just in case you forgot about him, Ironheart or Riri Williams, Gravik the Idiot from Secret Invasion, Gaia the Destroyer and Breaker of Chains from Secret Invasion, Christine from The New Adventures of Old Christine, please comment if you get that reference. And the worst part is, is that there are still so, so many more, with the only characters of real interest that I see in the casual and committed fandom that are actually still excited to see those characters in future projects are Shang-Chi and Moon Knight, myself included. And yeah, I guess you can throw in the characters like Echo or say She-Hulk, who have an incredibly deep stan community. No, not fan community. You heard me right. And when you disregard the exceptions of fan service with the likes of Mr. Fantastic, Captain Carter, and most of the characters in Spider-Man No Way Home, the fact of the matter is, is that nobody cares about these characters. And that is an actual issue. The MCU character death chart has become so oversaturated with bland and forgettable but diverse female characters, which isn't inherently a problem, but it's become such a focus for the studio that Marvel has lost track of the vision which made them the cinematic dynasty that the MCU once was. The path that characters like Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Thor, Loki, Bruce, Nick Fury, Kevin Feige, and so, so many more that had to take the risk, the characters and the people in charge that had to lay down the groundwork for fantastic character writing just to now get absolutely snubbed by the lazy character writing that plagues the Marvel productions now in writing rooms is absolutely disgusting and shameful to really watch. While I decided to mainly focus on the characters, character dynamics, and character arcs of the MCU, seeing how I believe those are truly the most important aspects of the Infinity Saga's success, there are still many, many reasons why I would consider Marvel's Phases 4 and 5 to be the MCU's filler arc. To put it simply, they're unfocused phases, and nothing is going to change until an actual plan is made or the audience and studio relationship is repaired to a point where both parties are on the same page. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy to think that that was not such an outlandish statement and it was truly the norm less than half a decade ago. But to try to end it here on a positive note, in hindsight, these phases could still be saved. Well, not really phase four, that's just pigeon shit at this point. But Marvel's phase five and beyond could still be saved, a phase that could turn out to be more important in the future, building on the newly introduced characters with great writing, creating fully fleshed out characters that somehow find a way to make their way into each other's lives and universe through an overarching narrative like in the previous saga. 
developing bonds and creating excitement for us the audience and experiencing the joy of watching some of our favorite characters share the screen with characters they should never be sharing it with. And as much slander as the movie The Marvels receives, scenes like the copycat Nick Fury scene with the likable Kamala recruiting Kate Bishop into what is more than likely the Young Avengers are exactly the type of scenes I'm talking about. Setups and character bonds that I'm truly looking for. It is simply a necessity if the MCU is looking for the same type of success of the yesteryears. <sighs> a man can dream, right? Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I don't know. Obviously, the majority of these projects get absolutely slandered to oblivion online. And for the most part, rightfully so. But do you think that the MCU can still be salvaged? I don't know. I just don't think that Marvel is anywhere close to the branding hell that Star Wars is in. And the worst part is, is that I don't even count Deadpool 3 as an MCU movie. They're just benefiting from the movie's greatness and have absolutely nothing to do with it. Man, it's a tough deal, I guess. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that a little bit more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.